So we are here in Ghana, West Africa. We are on campus at the University of Ghana. And look at this place, this place is beautiful. We love taking walks here. Nice, quiet campus here. Love the trees, the beauty here. For those who don't know me, my name is John Christian. And I'm Sophia Christian. And we are known as the Native Born Family. This video is five dumb mistakes that we made when we moved internationally. Here we go. Ghana is a relatively safe country with low crime rates in comparison to other West African countries. But despite Ghana's reputation of being generally safe, instances of pickpocketing, residential burglary, and vehicle burglary has increased. Foreigners will find themselves targeted more often than locals. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you have a secure location. You are going to a country that you're not from, you want to make sure that safety is number one. When we first moved to Ghana, we rented a place where the security wasn't good. Later on, we noticed that the security in the complex was letting anyone and everyone into the complex. So you want to keep your eyes on that. The place that we rented out was a little cheaper than other places, or somewhat cheaper than other places, but the security was too relaxed. And of course, some of you know our story that when we were sleeping one night, all of our stuff was stolen. And this was in a secure location, but um, it wasn't really secure. It didn't have 24 seven like guarded security. And our stuff was stolen one night and it was devastating because it was very important items, very important items. Exactly. So what we tried to do is just to let people know that are coming to any country for the first time, as you look around to see where you want to be, where you want to live, where you want to really make roots, do it from a secure place so you can make a choice um, that's best for you and your family. We just want you all to be mindful that even though it may cost an extra $200, it may cost an extra $100, your security shouldn't come cheap. You know, it shouldn't, if that's what you're interested in. Some people want to live rural er in more rural areas, more isolated areas, but you gotta make sure you know how to live that way when you're ready. Um, we recommend though, as you're at least visiting or first stepping into a country, make sure you're secure and get advice from people. Learn about how the people are in that location. Mm -hmm. You know, really figure it out and get your feet wet. I feel the exact same way. You wanna start off the right way so you can have the long-term success. Mm -hmm. um, Start off in the city, get to know people, make sure you take your time when you choose where you wanna live. And I think the good signs that you should look for is if the grounds is kept up. Mm -hmm. If you see the security taking down names and checking in cars and mm -hmm. asking questions, those are the things that you wanna look for um, when you move into a community. Something we learned during our time living abroad is less is more. If you don't need it, don't bring it. Save yourself time and money and avoid the hassle. If shipping is a must, make sure you have a shipper that is able to explain the process and all the details. They should be able to ship it, clear it through customs, and bring it to your steps. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that is, I'm telling you, we oh were so God. amped mm -hmm. to leave America that we were like, yeah, we shipping everything, yo, beds and... We didn't have furniture. No, no we did. Your, your mother shipped her bed. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a big old fluffy, expensive mattress. She's like, I'm taking my mattress. <laughs> we were sending like our electronics. Um, well, yeah, electronics dishes, is a everything. given. But yeah, we had dishes. We had mm -hmm. we had such paperwork. We had paperwork <laughs> like paperwork that we never seen in years. We packed like it away. Five years worth of paperwork. We, we had like um, we had furniture. We had some furniture items. Yep, yep. We had I don't know. We had everything. We just took our household over with us. And man, when those items arrived at the port they like gave us a big old price like you got to pay this i'm like i thought i paid everything like no how are, much do you remember these are custom how fees how much it was about how much it was i don't even know i tell you i was actually I don't sick know. that time so i don't know i was sick with yeah Miriam. i wasn't even expecting to pay that much and it's so crazy because once we got our items it just sat in the garage we didn't even use we it y'all we stayed yeah. in ghana 
for like six months. This is back in time. 2013. Right, right. We stayed in Ghana for six months, and when we got ready to leave, we just end up shipping it all back. So please do not bring your life. Also, if you want to bring more with you, you could just purchase an extra bag to go on the plane because that's much cheaper and it's less of a hassle versus having it um, shipped to the country. Just bring your things with you and pay the extra cost for the luggage. What has helped us is we adopted this mindset of becoming minimalist, getting rid of things and analyzing the things that you need and don't need is worth it just going through that process because you don't want to bring things that's not necessary. Bring the things that you love and get rid of the things that you don't love. Many people manage to take what they do as a profession and get a job in another country. That is highly advisable for quick financial stability. As for us, our goal has always been to be digital nomads so we can travel and work anywhere around the world. After much trial and error, we managed to use the internet to live our passion and make money online. Our online business is growing and we plan on using this digital platform to inspire people all around the world. Check our website online, nativeborn.com. Our motto is focused on family, freedom, health, and happiness. Yeah, so, you know, we came here on a dream and a prayer <laughs> and we thought, you know, our funds were just gonna magically, no, we didn't. But um, we had savings and, you know, we had a pretty good amount of money, um, but it went very fast, very, very, very fast. So we recommend that wherever you move to, make sure that you have residual income. Exactly. You have residual income. Savings is great. It's great to have a savings and that's important. But um, without residual income, you'll be so surprised how fast money can go. Sometimes people can have a mindset thinking like, okay, I'm gonna do this when I get there, everything's gonna be good. No, I, I recommend that, that you do a business that's proven to give you income. Like you have a track record of how much you make mm -hmm. and you can do the same thing no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do. So before you come here and start a business, start the business right now. Mm. Start it right now, get the income right now. Show yourself that this is what this business is making and now I can go ahead and make this move and be okay. So please take your time and be realistic. Don't send your money ahead of time, especially to people you don't know. Wait till you arrive in the country you are interested in. When working with professionals, do it in person. Make sure there is some sort of written agreement in place which will protect both parties. While we were still in the US, we sent money to people that we trusted to secure a place for us. And when we arrived in Ghana, we found out the story changed and the place that we were supposed to go to changed. And it's interesting because we were supposed to save money. We saved money because they gave us a place that was cheaper. But then we asked them, okay, where's the rest of the money that we saved? They said fees. Fees. So I suggest that you get yourself an Airbnb or a hotel just to get yourself acclimated to the new area once you arrive. Mm -hmm. And once you get here, have a real estate agent, someone show you around, right. a reputable you know, place. Let them show you around. Get a feel of the neighborhoods that you like. Get a feel of the environment that you like. And then when you feel you got the place that you want, then you pay. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of reputable people here. Yeah. But yep. you got to really do it from here. Yes. Don't give nobody your money. Sorry. Yep. Don't send your money. Exactly. Don't send your money. <laughs> Don't send your money. Keep your money in your pocket. Keep your money in your pockets. Like, you know, be patient. Mm -hmm. Be anxious for nothing. Stay in control. Stay in control. Yes. Stay in control. For real, for real. Absolutely. We anxiously invested our time, money, and energy towards purchasing land only later to find out that we were taken advantage of. We wasn't fully informed enough to make a purchase of this caliber and needed more time to figure out what we really wanted. This process is not to be taken lightly. When you are not patient and have not done your due diligence, you set yourself up to be scammed. Hire a reputable independent surveyor, real estate agent, etc. Always protect your interests and do not be afraid to walk away from a seemingly great deal. A lot of people are really interested in buying land. Yes. You know, we spoke to some people who have been here in Ghana for years. Yes, decades. And they all told us, take your time. 
So come here, rent, mm -hmm. and get to know Ghana or whatever country you're going to. Mm -hmm. Get to know the place. Find out what area resonates with you. Mm -hmm. And then look for land. Mm -hmm. Do not be so quick to look for land especially when you know your resources are limited. Build your team. Yeah, yeah. Before you even go purchase, build your team. You need your real estate agent. Build a team of people that's reputable, that you mm -hmm. trust before you even think about, oh, I got a hookup. People yes. that you can see up close and personal. You can look into their eyes <laughs> and, be, and shake their hand and exactly. do business. That's how you do business. Not all, all the time from over the phone. You know, Try to really get to know these people on a personal level. But it's a very fickle process. Yeah. It's a lot of stories, y'all. Yeah. A lot of stories, and it's overwhelming. All right, so here's some bonus tips. Okay, well, one. I'm gonna read it. Well, okay. Hold on. Um, <laughs> wait, no, no. Okay, um, well, I'm gonna give like one quick tip that I think is important, especially when living, you know, here that I've learned. Carry toilet tissue. <laughs> <laughs> Carry toilet paper, baby wipes, all those sorts of things. Also, oh my gosh, this has been such a lifesaver, you guys. Hold on. I got it. I carry it on me everywhere. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. playing. Now, of course, when you go to certain locations, you ain't got to worry about that. Like, we go to malls and stuff. You know, your bathroom's going to be fine. All that stuff is going to be fine. But, um, hold on. I think I got it. Yeah, one lady got an attitude with me because I asked for tissue. Like, mm. yeah, that happened to you, too. You had to do a number two. And you went to <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. You went to the bathroom. You was like, yo, can I she gave you a little a little like yeah, sliver of tissue. Little two, and you had to get it from her. Pieces. I was like, yo. Like, yo man, Good thing I, I had some tissue in the trunk. Right, too. we had some tissue in the car. I was car, like, so bro. Like, really? I didn't even I didn't even <laughs> argue. I just went straight to my car. No, don't argue. <laughs> now this you guys, this is a lifesaver. This is called a travel John. Yeah. Actually John created this. Yep. Oh, is that the <laughs> <laughs> No, but this is called a travel John. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this saved my life. One time me and John went out, and um, when we went out, I had these bathrooms so bad. He went, when we went out, there was a toilet area, and you told me about that area. Yeah. Next subject. Yep. Um, and I already knew not to go, because sometimes you can just tell that it's not a place that you wanna, mm -hmm. um, you know, but anyways. So, I went into the car, and I used this. Yep. This travel, John, what you do, you open it up, and it's really long, mm -hmm. and it has like gels or something within the bag. Yep. You put it over yourself and you pee or whatever. You can't do a number two in here, I don't think. Um, but you um, pee and it actually turns it into like a solid. So you can literally turn it upside wow. down and it doesn't leak out. And you can use it until it's all the way filled and it turns it into like a solid gel type of state. So you go in the car, do your business, you know, got your baby wipes, wipe it, put it in the trash and you go out and you keep partying, having fun. You're good. So this came through. Then another day when we went out to eat, we went out to a, a, a food place, a local food place, and the porta potties were horrible. Okay. Horrible. Yep. I don't even go into them. So my daughter, she ate and she just had to use the bathroom and she was crying because she knew it was nowhere to go. Oh, man. So I remember what happened? That. Yeah. So Ray was like, Daddy, I go I have to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I was like, Soraya, can you hold it? And then she was like, Yeah. And then two minutes later, Daddy, I have to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Soraya, can you hold it? She was like, No. She started crying. I was like, Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. Anyways, brought her to the car. We got the travel John, and it was a lifesaver. Yeah, I brought her in the car, and this was the first time she used it. She was, she was, didn't want to go because she felt uncomfortable. Like you know, she didn't want to pee all over the car. I said, "Saray, you're fine. It's covering you. You're good." Yep. And then she went to the bathroom, and she was just like, "What's happening?" <laughs> and then she, you know, she did it, and then she was happy. You know, that's just the reality of how it can be sometimes when you travel. And so I just want you guys to be prepared. We want you guys to be prepared because these are things we had to find out. And with five kids, yep. kids always gotta use the bathroom. Exactly. Like they always gotta go. I gotta use the bathroom. They like, always gotta go. We always trying to make sure they, they um, use the bathroom before we travel. Now, anywhere. well, especially with girls, obviously Yashua, we could just find a tree and bring them outside exactly, and yep. he's good. But the girls, they gotta squat and stuff. And I also have the, uh, the go girl, you go girl. Okay. Um, I haven't really used that yet, but we use the travel john. And we, we we did teach our girls how to squat. You gotta do it. But that's where the go do. girl that's where the go girl comes in handy because the go girl allows you to pee like a boy if you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> All I'll this information the, will be the in the description box. Yeah. Alright y'all, we appreciate your time. That's it for now. Until next time. Peace. Peace.